Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome. So glad you could join me today for Reclaim Yourself and how to overcome mental and physical overwhelm and to move your life forward of what is holding you back. I am your mastery coach, Kettlebell Lady of Iron. I work primarily with those that are 40 and over and we are going to explore today what is holding you back from achieving what you want the most out of life. And you may have an illness, back, shoulder, or hip pain, and may have been told you'll never be able to function again, whether out doing damage. With my experience and objective view, we're going to move forward. And you can go to my website. I want you to see the interview from David. He goes by Sunwolf. He is phenomenal and I've worked with him and trained with him and you will love his testimonial. So let's begin our journey with how you can reclaim yourself. One of the first aspects of it is overcoming fatigue through movement. If we're going to reclaim ourselves, then uh, it's important to know how to pace our energies and work forward. There's a Samuel Maricora, and he did a very fascinating study. He discovered that our brains, our minds, cannot discern between mental and physical fatigue. It equates it all the same. So that is why it is so important that we know how to work with our body, inner self, and be interconnected with who we are and how our body responds to activity and eat superfoods, be hydrated, get quality sleep. And they find that when we go into overload, then the blood and the oxygen in the cells gets restricted. That's when the fatigue, the overwhelm, and nothing good can happen from there. So let's see what we can do to help learn how to work and reach uh, over reaching or training. One of my credentials is personal trainer with specialties. And it actually, the overtraining, overreaching is for all of us when we go, oh, I've got such a full day. I don't know how I can fit one more thing in. Well, let's learn how to work with it. Some of the things you can look for are trouble sleeping, irregular sleep patterns, irritable changes in mood, feelings of depression, difficulty completing daily tasks, physical activity elevates our heart rate, irregular heart rate, physical pain, inflammation, persistent soreness of muscles and tissues, physical and mental fatigue. Any of this can you relate to? Reduce rate of recovery, increased rate of perceived exertion, brain fog, unable to think clearly, lowered immune system. Now I do have an attachment so you can start journaling and seeing where you're at. And when we have a very light activity, whether it's physical or mental, then we're in a state of calm and the cortisol doesn't go into overdrive, the heart rate doesn't go up, and that's when we lose weight. And then a two to three is light activity. And that is another safe zone. And moderate activity, we do need to keep moving throughout our day. And that is good that we don't sit or stand too much. And for vigorous activity, if we're doing that all day, that is just too much on the body. And it actually uh, we age much, much quicker. So let's, let's keep exploring here. And I did put the same chart here, and it's a little bigger, so you can see the rate of perceived exertion and what it looks like, a very light one. So and, and when you journal, rate your perceived exertion. Are you at a one? Are you at two or three? a four or five, a six or seven. Now, if you're at eight or nine, whoa, that's when you need to slow down unless you're doing a short burst of physical activity. And it's so important to work with our mindsets. Are you keep going what you've always done? If we keep repeating what we've done, 
it, we get the same results. The master coach, we call that uh, the fact, how we perceive or see it, what emotions are attached to that. And if we're in a flight, fright, uh, anger mode, we don't think clearly and we are not really, we're just totally out of control with our life. And that does not work well. We need to be able to take a deep breath, relax and enjoy ourselves. And our thoughts, where are your thoughts? Where are you keeping your thoughts? And, and we need positive affirmations to get the outcome we want. And how do you challenge your story and reclaim your life? So that's what we're going to discuss, how to challenge your story and reclaim your life so you can repaint a new portrait of your life. And are you ready to get uncomfortable with yourself? That's one of the most important things. If we stay in this comfort zone, it, it keeps shrinking and shrinking and we need to keep pushing ourselves forward and explore and enjoy our lives. Sometimes everything in life is about risking for a dream. No one can see but you. So what dreams do you have? What do you want to move forward with your life? Start shaping your own day. Start walking your own walk. This journey is yours. Take charge of it. Stop giving other people the power to shape your life. And we all have our inner sovereignty and power. And that's the other thing as a mastery coach we discussed is how to maintain your power and to be able to conceptualize where you want to go. Yes, there'll be challenges ahead. We always have challenges. We have challenges whether we decide to do nothing or get stuck and or if we decide to move forward, get uncomfortable and find out what else is out there in life. And what are you looking for? And it's not out there, it is within you. And I believe in you and who you are and where you can go because of my own journey. And I discovered during that journey that even though when it seemed like others gave up on me, I never gave up on myself. And I don't give up on others because we can't always control what occurs in our life, but we can control how we respond. This is my journey. And this is how I choose to respond. I had a seatbelt injury that left me disabled. You can see I had bent elbows and my body was contorted in pain. I also had two major illnesses. And again, because I got uncomfortable and took the challenge and the courage, I moved forward and the doors did open and I did totally restore, reclaim my life. And that's why my challenge is to you, what can I do to help you reclaim your life? Here are some factors that can help you. We need to keep movement, for movement is nourishment to the cells. During my healing journey, I learned so much that I'm now sharing with you. There's posture awareness, and that keeps the blood flow and the oxygen to the tissues of the body. And as I showed you the perceived exertion chart, that will help us with a 50% rule is to always cut back and say, oh yeah, I think I can do say 10 things. And maybe realistically in that day, when you think factor in the life, your family, your job, and all the other responsibilities have, maybe the 50% out of the 10% of that energy and that will have reduced inflammation and potential for a setback. So listen to your body very, very closely. The other part of my healing journey is functional movement. Before I actually became a certified functional movement specialist, I would go through these basic moves. Can you squat? Can you do a hurdle step? Can a lunge? How is your shoulder reach? This helps your motor control with the bird dog. And it also helps if you have a back injury to help slow down those fast twitch fibers. And, and then a straight leg rage and a push up. And then I start saying, oh, well, we can't do this and let's move forward. 
And I also offer, which takes about 10 minutes, a functional movement screening to set a safe uh, area of range for you to start working out with a baseline and how to move under tension, relax, controlled by intra-abdominal pressure to protect the back to avoid injury under load. And if your breathing isn't right, you miss the starting point. So this is just a little bit more on the functional movement. And what is important, can you push, pull, balance, bend at the hips instead of folding at the waist, bounce and take a jarring, carry a load under tension, such as a stack of groceries, and these are some of the principles that I share and help create a safe foundation for movement. Because every day we're going to be picking up objects off the floor. Maybe it's a heavy bag of pet food or reaching to put something on a shelf, bending, twisting, moving. And we don't want to all of a sudden go, ah, I tweak myself, now I'm down. And that's very costly. Some of the best ways to, and I don't know which ones work for you or what you're currently doing, is yoga or Tai Chi or find a quiet place to just sit, meditate, relax, take a deep breath. And then this helps your body to get back in balance. And so it can calm itself and get the blood and nourishment through the tissues and it increases your hydration, firmer muscles and energy. And to get adequate sleep, it controls the weight, reduces your cortisol stress. And it's an important part of healing from injury. And that is what helped me is I have about 15 years experience of doing the exercise form of Tai Chi to slow the body down and let that healing part of your brain, which it shows up here, it runs the whole part of the back of, of the brain, crew down the back, it's the vagus nerve. And we need to switch it into the healing parasympathetic system. So, and then again, I'd like to see you keep a dowry because this is a challenge. And we all have our challenges and write down what is challenging you the most. And are you breathing deep into your diaphragm, inhaling, exhaling? And lots of times we're under stress, we just chest breathe into the upper part, to the rib cage and not deep, deep into that uh, diaphragm. And we need to have deep diaphragmatic breaths in order to relax and just take in that fresh air. And this is a continuation because what happens if we do not control how we breathe and we're just chest breathing and not breathing deep, deep into that diaphragm, our secondary uh, neck muscles, the scaling muscles tighten up. And if you ever have a pain in the neck, not that you are a pain in the neck or anyone else is, it could be that you have so much stress and you're breathing so shallow that these neck muscles, the secondary muscles into the traps and such tighten up, trying to get more breath in so you can breathe. And then the posture goes when you lean over the computer or a workstation, and you're more likely to injure yourself and the shortness of breath and the supply of oxygen your body is absolutely necessity for all our daily activities. Strength and weak respiratory muscles. That's the other thing I have is, is diagrams on say like crocodile breathing where you're on your stomach and you feel taking a really, really deep breath into that diaphragm and feeling that abs, inhale and exhale. And you put your fingers on the sides of your hips and you can feel the pushing your fingers in and out. You can do four square breathing, which a lot of your military does. Bring in in a square. There's a variety of different kinds of yoga breathing in that. And Dr. Stuart McGill with uh, the body mechanics also has another form that's helped me. But if you have any hypertension thing, it's not recommended. Just take like a 10, bell, 10 pound plate off a barbell, put it on your abs, it strengthens your abs. 
and it teaches you kinesthetically how to breathe really, really deep, take deep breaths, just like the crocodile breathing does. And then functional training for daily activities. What are you doing to keep moving? It doesn't mean you necessarily have to do real strenuous activities. For instance, at one of my lowest points, when I was in so much pain and fatigue from the two major illnesses and seatbelt injury, I discovered that by just doing five to 10 minutes broken up through the day, my body healed and I got stronger. And it's important to work all the joints of the body. That's why kettlebells is one of my favorite tools. Although I use uh, dumbbells and weight resistance, body weight, Pilates, and a variety of other activities. And this is just another one of functional training. Now, again, as you are reclaiming yourself, what is your activity level? I'd love to hear from you of what's working and what isn't working because sometimes the best exercise, if we don't like it, or if our body just isn't geared to it, is just not gonna work. Can you squat, reach, do planks, rolls, reach, knee ups, single deadlifts. And the, the single deadlift or a deadlift is a fundamental to teach you how to hip hinge because the hip hinge is one of the most important movements to do each day. And some recommended exercises is uh, we need to make it part of our daily life. And again, if you can go for a walk, get up about every hour to an hour and 45 minutes and get stretched out. Gear exercises and physical activity to your own abilities, limitations, and interests. And that's something also I can help with you with, with functional movement screenings. And I do have courses and classes that help you work through this process. And it says, generally speaking, 30 minutes of high intensity workout. And I have over 200 videos and I discovered through Pablo Tesseline and studies to the Russian studies and Swedish that our bodies are best geared, especially when we're over 40, to short bursts of exercise, say like 30 seconds on, 10 minutes off and you do four exercises, do it for five minutes. And if you don't have time, do another five, 10 minutes later or do the 10 minutes, you have high intensity interval training. And another part of this is to be able to stretch. We need to be, I think of cats and dogs, animals. They know how to stretch and breathe and move. We need to stretch. And yoga, I love yoga stretches. There's a lot of real good benefits of daily stretching improves your health, and we never want to go to an end range with your stretching, but it helps keep that endurance, the flexibility, mobility, and range of motion with variations of form of getting the fascia, the outer tissues relaxed and released. You can use foam rolling, sticks, and other things to help with that stretching. And it improves your function and strength to respond efficiently to stress created by activity. And it may really reduce your risk of injuries from strain and sprain because when we exercise, our muscles need to be totally and fully warmed up. Just as afterwards, we need to cool them down to get the lactic acid re released from our body. And here is just some other forms of stretching. And this again, is just a picture of the before and after of how they stretching and moving from that seatbelt injury over time and with an excellent massage practitioner help me to regain my mobility and stability and have a full active life. And these are just some stretches and I love doing the stretches. Yoga stretches are some of my favorite. And you can see here, and again, the breathing behind the shield and taking deep, deep breaths and breathe into it because if we're not breathing deep, then that's the other thing that happens besides cutting off that restriction and blood flow if we try to rush or if we're too big a hurry is then the muscles can't relax. But if we learn how to relax into the pain, I'm not talking pain that leads to injury, pain from a muscle that becomes tight and restricted, then if you take a deep breath and relax, 
and that muscle will loosen up and stretch out a little further. And you repeat this two to three times, and it may take a while, and it may happen quickly, depending how much muscle memory is in there that's keeping that muscle tight. And child pose, that's one of the best ones for your safe back stretches. And you can modify it like the one here below or do a full stretch. And that one you can even do from a chair along with a cat cow and some of these other forms. See like your cat camel here, where you can, you can stretch up and down in a chair. And there's these are downward dogs. And the table, this one is real good if you've got tight hips and have both legs up, especially if you got a back condition and then do wall walks. You go up and down the wall, uh, the wall, and that helps strengthen the core and loosen up the hips. And this is a stretch for your piriformis or your hip muscles. And a bridge is really good. And if you uh, are having weak glutes from sitting too much, if you put a ball between your knees and squeeze as you inhale, and then as you exhale, release that ball, that will help strengthen those glute muscles. And that's your downward dog. And I would love to have you join me in my Facebook group. And I do have the form there, the PDF form, to help you reclaim and get yourself moving forward. And it's been great uh, being with you on this first day. And we have two more days of challenges. And I have uh, complete PDFs with workouts and strength in numbers. I have those programs regularly and besides the one-on-one -on -one coaching. And I'd love to hear from you with your Q&A. And on the session tomorrow, we're going to talk about chronic pain and posture. And thanks for coming. And we're going to continue on the uh, webinar tomorrow, how you can reclaim yourself through this challenge. Thanks for watching. This is your Mastery Coach with Kettlebell Plus 360. Until next time.